shout out to these guys for supporting my channel especially alan thank you alan god don't you just love it when Syndra plays with your oh no this is a pg-13 video did you know Syndra wasn't always as strong as she was in the start i said 12. i know that's crazy right yeah she has had some pretty wild points in her tft career and that's what we're gonna discover today Syndra first graced the rift back in set two she was featured in probably the most popular and easy to use comps of the set ocean mages but honestly she was extremely underwhelming and was almost never upgraded past a two star despite receiving nothing but buffs for the entire set still ocean mages was an incredible comp and she was still a feature she had potential and that potential was about to be realized this is when syndra started to take over and when the infamous ego comp was front and center and benefited immensely when Riot decided that Hush needed to go and to replace it, we're gonna go with a thing called Chalice. And this period of time is probably the peak of Magic Caster strength in the entirety of TFT, mainly because Janus was just absolutely filthy. 3.5, they added Janna. And so Syndra and the rest of the Star Guardians had a slightly better cap because Janna provided a little shitload of CC. Still, for Syndra to hit her peak of damage and be a huge threat, she needed to be 3 star, because by the time 3.5 had rolled around, they actually had already removed Chalice, and as such, Ego suffered. To compensate for this, they allowed her orbs to carry over, if the previous unit died in her cast. And then they tried to reduce her mana to 40, and why the hell? Like, huh? Are you kidding me? Like, what the f*** is that all about? And she shared her balls? You could literally have two Syndras on your board, both creating like an infinite feedback loop of damage and mana generation and they shared balls on top of that and they didn't even nerf this they didn't even touch it not one patch or one glimpse i mean yes they nerfed the mana eventually they made her 50 mana but then they didn't touch syndra at all for the rest of the set it was still there in the 3.5 revival like what the fuck needless to say that was a problematic time in TFT. But I think really why they didn't touch it is because that tech was hidden and only the most diehard of people knew about it. This was before like meta TFT was big after all. Anyway, once that was all done, she kind of simmered down and disappeared for set four. Until set five, where she made her not so triumphant return. But this time she was basically just a support unit and you put her in to play against assassins. As soon as like a unit was close to her, she just blew them away. You never really three-starred her again. She just kind of existed to fill out Redeemed, and that was basically it. That was her whole job. I redeemed fling assassins away. And Riot didn't buff her, and I don't see why they should have. She was extremely boring. I mean, she was useful, but she was kind of boring. So she disappeared once more for set six, and then they brought her back in 6.5. Fair enough, and I guess they thought to themselves, why don't we just use set 5? She wasn't problematic then, so we could just use set 5 ability and be done with it. But that did not work. No, that did not work at all. In fact, the VIP bonus elevated her to godlike status. And I mean godlike. You could easily one-shot backlines just by throwing their own unit back at them. And needless to say, she was very promptly hotfixed. She still saw some play throughout the set, but... Man, that first patch, <clears throat> she was quite strong. Not quite set 12 levels, but still extremely good. So what next? Right, had tried throwing enemies, throwing orbs, well, how about throwing your own units? And that's what set eight accomplished. Turning her into a quasi set three thresh, where her ability was literally throwing your units at the enemy. Because nothing says, I heart you, like throwing units at the enemy. The only issue is, is that for both eight and 8.5, Syndra was weak horribly weak. She got buffs in every single patch pretty much and the only reason why she was featured is because Echo and Yumi were so disgusting otherwise Syndra was just a unit that you maybe put in to get Urgot or something. I mean but she had one of the coolest ideas since Set 3 Thresh and it was extremely disappointing and so they had her out for two more sets and then she came back in Set 11. Oh boy, was that a fucking ride. She was in one of the strongest comps in the set as the premier forecast of the team, and she fucking sucked. 
like truly. For the first few patches, she was completely awful, until people start learning how to actually play Fable because it's quite a complicated trait, and with a couple decent buffs, oh my gosh, you skyrocketed into something that closely resembled her lore. And if you played back then, it was almost as if you were channeling the ghost of 2014 Bjergsen. Fable really was the gift they kept on giving in set 11, and I for one am glad that is out of my life. Seriously, Fabled. And here we have today, she's returning as a 2 cast with one of the most batshit scaling mechanics the game has ever seen. Syndra's a tiny bit of a problem. A tiny, tinsy tiny little bit of a problem. It's almost weird, we're going in a time chamber packed to set 5, but instead of LeBlanc it's Syndra. With enough spell stacks, she becomes an absolute beast, outscaling pretty much every champion in the game, despite being a 2 cast. And if you get a mana item in stage 3, Oh, just enjoy your top four. No worries, man. Just just take the top four. Who cares? Just have the top four. It's, it's nice. You, you deserve... So basically, you have a scaling unit in a scaling trait. And I'm pretty sure with enough stacks, she could easily beat out three star five cost eventually. Actually, I'm surprised she doesn't already do that. 